Toby Daniels, the director of Gaming Wall Street, with me now. Toby, good to see you. What do you make of it? I mean, uh, you know, we, I, I've worked in this, uh, covered this industry for, for nearly 40 odd years. But for somebody like yourself, did you come away from gaming and memes thinking it's gambling, that these are poor people who are just literally thinking they've got, they've got a handle on it, but actually they are the meat in the sandwich? It's a great question. Generally, I would say there's always a component of gambling when it comes to any meme, anything. Um, I think in the case of GameStop itself, it was much more powerful than just gambling. There was a really big idea, both on a thesis side as well on, on a social side, kind of let's stick it to the big guys and see who wins. My experience has been that the big guys inevitably win in the longer run. And that's what we've seen in the market over the last six, six months. Would you agree? I'd actually challenge you on this with a very recent development. So part of our documentary was about a practice called payment for order flow that Robinhood has become famous for and um, has oftentimes come away with impunity like the big guys usually do. But as part of the documentary rolling out, we uh, teamed up with um, Dave Lauer of Urban Finance and we actually ran an impact campaign that now has 90,000 people behind it. 71,000 signatures went to the SEC. There was two meetings at the SEC and the SEC has then, after about a week and a half after those meetings announced, relatively large reforms to the payment for order flow model, which is only benefiting the largest players in the market. So I think in this one case, maybe the little guys won. Right, but they might have won on the payment on the order flow, but as the price collapses, I always feel, you know, those who are slightly more experienced manage to hold on. Uh, I've got to ask you, did you take a punt? Uh, have you taken a punt on any of the meme stocks? I mean, Revlon, any of these? You, you've not been tempted to put your own money in there just to have a go, just to feel that gambling frisson. So I actually put my own money in GameStop and in AMC and a few other of the meme stocks back in 2021, which then allowed me to tell the story kind of from an inside perspective, both from the retail inside perspective, what was it like, and also the Wall Street inside perspective. And I would say 100%, right, like these, these stocks are just like other stocks. They can go up, they can go down, they behave in a variety of ways that right. people have never seen before necessarily. So there's always a winner and a loser in the stock market. But the big picture is everything goes up if the economy uh, does well. That's true. But I do often wonder with the meme stocks, the damage they did, bearing in mind that it, let's take an AMC, for example, there are tens of thousands of employees in these companies. They're part of the real economy, as well as part of this Reddit meme stock Robin Hood. Did you come to any judgment on that? Yeah, it's, it's hard, right? The um, employees are far removed, so, uh, so to speak, from the actual stock price, but the stock price has a huge influence, right? And if you look at AMC yeah. specifically, if there wasn't this meme stock craze that happened, that uh -huh. clearly, you know, a lot of people gained something, a lot of people lost something. But if it wasn't for that craze, there's a high chance that AMC would have not made it financially, right? And this swing in the secondary market and pushing up the price so much and AMC being able to take out billions and billions of dollars, both in equity and in loans, allowed the company to at least survive um, some longer. Yeah. Good to have you, sir. Fascinating docuseries. I'm very grateful. Thank you, sir, for joining us. That's Crespi.